Good afternoon. Welcome to WASDA's webinar for, for October 30th. This webinar is being produced by some of our board directors from around the state that are members of the Innovation Task Force for WASDA. Our subject today is early learning and the partnerships that these districts are building to really support their innovative programs. We'll be visiting four different school districts around the state and hosted by school directors sharing their expertise. And we do have some school district personnel helping us out too with their expertise. So with that, our first school district is the Bremerton School District. And our hostess is Carolyn Perkins, board president. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here this afternoon and to do this presentation. There we go. The first thing I would like to show you is a video that is, has been done a number of years ago when we were first deciding to enlarge our early childhood. Whoop. How do I go back? Okay, great. Okay, let me just start looking up for you. Okay. And I don't quite see the video yet. good social skills, the value of learning among other important values, to be good readers and learners, and ultimately to be able to support themselves and their families when they grow up. So much of this is tied to their success in school. And a major predictor of how well kids do in school is their readiness going in. Being in good health, having healthy meals, family stability, early literacy, and sometimes early interventions are all keys to this readiness. Daily at KCR, we see the struggles many low-income adults face, in part because earlier they dropped out or otherwise did not do well in school. Certainly, completion of higher levels of education is not a guarantee of greater success, but research shows a clear correlation between higher education and higher income earned. As superintendent of the Bremerton School District, I am very pleased to be here to talk to you about our Early Childhood Partnership. There's nothing more important to the quality of life of a city than a, uh, than a healthy school district, a vibrant school district. Uh, we have been selected by the Foundation for Child Development as one of the two in this state people that, who does PK3, that's us, and we're very proud of that. The National Child Foundation recognized Bremerton School District as one of four in the nation that are doing a research-based preschool through third grade early literacy effort that is really paying off. In April, the American School Board Journal named the district as one of the three grand prize winners for the 2007 Magna Award. This award was given for the district's Starting Early for Success program. While the district can be proud of their recent accomplishments, just six years ago, things were quite different. In 2001, we did the Dibbles testing on our kindergarten kids for the first time. So we found out that the kids coming into kindergarten were lower than the national average. So I sat in the board meeting and we said, uh, our incoming, of our incoming kindergartners, 4 to 6 percent already. And our board member said, did you say 46? And we said, no, 4 to 6. Only 4% of our children came in to kindergarten knowing their letters. And many children went through our schools and our preschools um, not being taught. One of the worst graduation rates in the state. Obviously the school district had struggled over a period of time. Uh, we had a high percentage of low-income kids, so our WASL scores were lower. 
You know, when I think back in 2000, people, I mean, surely were working hard. That's not the issue. People were trying hard. It, there was a lot of, of uh, not, not a systemic way of doing it. There wasn't a, a focus, a cohesion. Recognizing the need for children to be better prepared when entering kindergarten, the district developed a partnership with Head Start and other area preschool programs, both private and public, to increase academic readiness of young children. District leaders recognized the important roles that both preschool teachers at community organizations and district staff can play in this readiness. So we started out with what everybody cares about, and that is the children. And that was the basis for our partnership. So we met with our uh, preschool partners and we decided that we needed to find a basic curriculum for reading for a preschool that would be appropriate for our kids. Over the last several years, Head Start and ECAP programs have pretty much focused on socialization skills for children. And those are really important because it teaches children how to listen, how to get along with others, and all of that, which is important to their success in school. And they also provide uh, good medical and dental services for the low-income families. And that has always been um, one of the major focuses. But over the most recent years, um, the focus on literacy and math and those kinds of skills have come to the forefront. And through brain research, we've realized that kid, the cognitive skills that kids have, or the ability that they have to learn, uh, is much greater than was believed before. So we've been partnering with the school district to kind of ratchet up the literacy skills in our kids, and we've found it to be really successful, and it shows in the outcome measures that have been coming uh, from this collaboration. And so what we've managed to do is work together uh, as a team for the better, the better success that they're going to have in school in the future. So we know it works. We're really excited to be a part of it, and we're really proud to have to be a part of this collaboration. I think we're finding that kids can learn and start their academic uh, journey much earlier than we thought before. I don't think people realized what these little guys could do. But now we know that if we can reach kids prior to first grade, they don't have to struggle for the rest of their lives. Preschool isn't just, you know, oh, it's just babysitting. Um, those days are, are gone. We're, we now make a difference in preschool. I think that Bremerton School Districts are doing a fabulous job. They're way ahead of the time. Bremerton's doing a wonderful job, and I'm, I'm very lucky to be a part of it. It makes it a lot easier for me. It makes it nicer for the kids because they feel successful. They love it. They love the activities. They have a lot of fun with it. And they love it. They just love it. They get a good, healthy start here. It's all the difference in the world for children and the families. The earlier you get to children and families, the better. Then they come here and things start clicking very quickly. It's really nice to see. The question a lot of times people say that you need to ask yourself is, would you place your child in that school? And my answer is yes, and I am. You know, I tell people this, and it's true. If I had children school age, they'd be in the Bellington School District. You know, KCR has been a great partner. I mean, for the, the Bremerton schools, we, I think we would be getting this wonderful national award were it not for KCR. We're very fortunate in Kitsap County to have organizations that work so well together on behalf of kids. We are serving approximately 5,000 students, six elementary Title I schools ranging from 52% to 80% free and reduced price lunch, 
Before we started, as you heard, only 4% of our children were entering kindergarten with early literacy skills. We started the process in 1999-2000 school year. Why? To make a difference, to increase the number of students impacted, directors coming together to become part of a learning community, professional development free of charge to directors and teachers, Latest, practice, latest and best practices and research would be and is still being discussed. Here is just a few, a representation of some of the preschools that partner with the Bremerton School. Well, who are we reaching? Community partners within Bremerton School District, preschools and day, daycares, including Head Start and ECAP, private and faith-based, also in-home daycare, families with young children. We identify preschool children as from ages 2 through pre-K. Well, why should we do it? Well, we want to prepare students to enter kindergarten. Improvement has been seen in social, academic, and emotional intelligence when implemented in early childhood. Social or soft skills are honed within a group atmosphere. Feeling accepted, having a sufficient social status, and maintaining positive relationships has a direct correlation to the child blooming academically. On the other hand, Poor or weak relationships generate a host of negative effects, including chronic elevated levels of cortisol, which can destroy new brain cells, impair social judgment, reduce memory, and diminish cognition. We want to improve language fluency and other cognitive processes, listening skills, following directions, and more active engagement has improved with students entering kindergarten. Thus, it reduces school problems and academic failure. Okay, so what are the long-term benefits? I call them savings. Children exposed to high-quality early education were less likely to drop out of school or repeat grades or need special education services compared with similar children who did not have such experience or exposure. Intervention. Well, fewer students are needing intensive or strategic support. Fewer students are needing special education services. Fewer students are retained. More students coming in prepared to access the core curriculum and then less supplemental materials are needed. This is an opportunity to be successful at school from the start, thus having an improved self-image. We found that this is part of why our graduation rates are increasing. And those that have such a good start are twice as likely to attend college or a trade school. Well, what does the district support? What is provided to the participating centers and families? We use the open court curriculum pre-K, and that's including training by the district. We have monthly director trainings by district special programs director and Early Childhood TOSA. Oh, book studies open our world to the latest research and strategies to reach and teach young children. It's their design for an opportunity to share in best practices, results from previous activities, and to support one another. Monthly pre-K teacher trainings provided by Early Childhood TOSA. This is not just handing the curriculum over, but it gives them actual hands-on staff development. It is imperative for new pre-K teachers, but also so needing for those that have been in the field for years. They don't feel lost 
or lonely or overwhelmed. They share new and creative methods to impart the knowledge. This builds a sense of community where collaboration on many issues based in the classroom can be discussed with helpful ideas for assistance and even resolution can be found. These monthly trainings and partnership meetings are held during the day and some on evenings to meet varied schedule of all participants. This high quality staff development is offered at no cost to participants, whether preschools, home daycares, or individuals. We give pre and post assessments for pre-K. We use the Dibble, we use Get It, Got It, Go. And although the Dibble has changed over the years, our scores in the beginning, as you heard, was 4% of our students. Currently, in the 2012-13 school year, which has just completed, we're seeing 60% were at benchmark in the beginning for letter naming fluency. We also have uh, the ability for uh, directors to check out books and games for centers. This helps them increasing their preschool library when resources are so tight. Well, we do have challenges, always. What do we want? What is our future looking at? Reaching more children prior to kindergarten. 43% of our children do not attend a preschool, so we started the demonstration classroom for parents in 2012. Flyers are distributed throughout the community and we are going to be enlarging on that also. So more families are finding out about that. We also have a challenge in the fade out, and we contribute part of that to mobility. Children with less vocabulary struggle as text becomes more complex in different subject areas. However, with, when children come in, in the beginning, before kindergarten, they are building on a firmer foundation, so when they reach the more difficult concepts, they can learn it more easily. We also have inadequate social behaviors that distract from learning, and we find that students that lack a preschool experience may struggle with routines and socialization. Pre-kindergarten and full-day kindergarten must be followed by aligned quality instruction. Our kindergarten through third grade staff receive excellent staff development to strategically introduce curriculum using the latest research for implementation. Well, where are we now? We are continuing to focus on literacy. We find that so important across all of the curriculum. However, we've also added a math foundation we're focusing always on socialization skills. And Common Core seems to be and is leaning more toward nonfiction literacy. So we have decided an emphasis needs to be to introduce nonfiction material at an early age, even more than we have done before. This has led to more building of language and introduction to what nonfiction material is actually about. Now, I was just wondering if you had any questions. Hi, Carolyn. This is Colleen, Assistant Director of Leadership Development at WASDA, and we do have a few questions for you. One okay. question was, what was the board's role in helping to support and building these partnerships, and was there anything you had to do around policy to build these partnerships? Not really. Um, I, I think probably just making sure that, as you know, full day kindergarten was not fully funded and is still not completely funded. So we had to make sure that we had not only a strong pre-K program, but also a full day kindergarten in all of our elementary schools. And we've had that. Um, but it's actually 
an actual policy change, not that I can think of off the top of my head. It's more embedded within uh, the policies that we currently have. Oh, okay, that's great. That's great to know. Another question we had from one of our viewers was, um, what is fade out when you talked about mobility? Fade out, that's a term that has been used for when they're going from third grade to fourth grade. Um, we seem to see that some children fall back faster than others. Um, the great strides of improvement are not seen like you saw from second grade to third or from first to second. And they, the text becomes more complex at fourth grade. So the great strides that they were making in kindergarten to first to second to third are not seen all the time as they go from third grade to fourth grade. Yes, yes. I, that's the fourth grade chasm, sometimes we called it. Thank you yeah. for that. We have one more question, and that sure. is, how did the board, how did you locate the in-house daycares? We have a TOSA that we use um, to, for really most of the collaboration, and she goes into the partners uh, that we have in the preschool. Um, so I think that has been one of our main focuses is just to use our TOSA for that. Oh, excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Carolyn. This is great information that's going to help a lot of your board colleagues across the state. Well, it was a pleasure to do it. Great.